Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And thanks for uh, inviting me here to share my views and to contribute my humble bit on the subject. Criminalizing torture. I will... Thank you. First of all, I will like to share with you what is the view of the international community on the torture? And to start with, I will refer United Nations Convention Against Torture. The General Assembly adopted and opened for signature and ratification UNCAT, United Nations Convention Against Torture, on 10th of December 1984. The convention was signed by Pakistan on 17th of December 2008 and further ratified it on 23rd of June 2010. So far as the term torture is concerned, torture is defined in Article 1 of uh, the United Nations Convention Against Torture and I would like to read it out. For the purpose of this convention, the term torture means any act by which severe pain or suffering, whether physical or mental, is intentionally inflicted on a person for, for such purposes as obtaining from him or third person information or a confession, punishing him for an act he or a third person has committed or is suspected of having committed, or intimidating or coercing him or third person or of any reason based on discrimination of any kind, when such pain or suffering is inflicted by or at the instigation of or with the consent or acquiescence of a public official or other person acting in, in an official capacity. So what I can gather from Article 1 of United Nations Convention Against Torture, that it speaks about the torture which is inflicted by a public functionary during the discharge of his duties. Now, Beside Article 1, there is another article, Article 2, which requires from all the nations, signatories, that each party shall take effective legislative, administrative, judicial or other measures to prevent act of torture in any territory under its jurisdiction. Similarly, it's Article 10 makes it incumbent upon all the states to ensure that education and information regarding the prohibition against torture are fully included in the training of the law enforcement personnel, civil or military, medical personnel, public officials and other persons who may be involved in the custody, interrogation or treatment of an individual subject to any form of arrest and detention. Beside that, I will also like to refer United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights and its Article 5, which prohibits the torture. Then International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, adopted by the General Assembly on 19th of December 1966. Its Article 7 lays emphasis again that no one shall be subjected to torture or cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment. Then it's Article 9, prohibits arbitrary arrest and detention. And likewise, it lays emphasis that moment a person is arrested, he must be provided with the grounds of his arrest. Now the question of foremost importance arises. What is the situation in Pakistan? Whether prior to United Nations Convention Against Torture, there was any legal provision? And how the dignity of an individual matters of rest and detention and right to have due process of law are dealt by the constitution, our constitution, which is called Constitution of Islamic Republic of Pakistan, 1973. First of all, Article 4, which, is not, uh, which, which, which does not fall within the chapter of fundamental rights, 
that speaks this is the inalienable right of every person to be dealt with in accordance with law then article 9 no one shall be deprived of life or liberty save in accordance with law and article 10 that basically is the safeguard against the torture i will firstly refer these articles and then i will tell the relevancy and how our courts have dealt with this topic according to article 10 of the constitution the moment a person is arrested or detained in custody he must be informed about the grounds on the basis of which his liberty is being curtailed and likewise article 10 sub article 2 of the constitution again makes it mandatory to produce him before the magistrate within reasonable time which is described section which is described 24 hours article 14 dignity of man and subject to law the privacy of the home shall be inviolable in line with the mandate of article 10 criminal procedure code certain provisions exist according to section 61 of the criminal procedure code a person at the most can be detained in police custody for 24 hours except and unless an order is not obtained from the magistrate according to section 167 crpc the accused so arrested under section 61 he is to be produced before the magistrate within 24 hours and who will pass the order of its future custody torture that leaves physical injuries to a person which can definitely with the passage of time can heal but the mental trauma a person suffers from torture in human treatment degrading treatment that continues for whole is of his life in pakistan our courts are very vigilant unfortunately our litigation that can be classified in two different compartments one the cases of high profile political entities these cases on account of their importance get public attention these cases are given coverage by the print media by the electronic media but as far as the cases of persons hailing from marginalized segment of our society unfortunately no heed is paid to those cases they don't get any public attention but that does not mean that general public is not aware about the steps being taken by our judiciary and the decisions being made and the efforts being put for curbing the menace of torture indeed i believe and especially after having gone through the 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 judicial archives that our judiciary with the grace of almighty allah is always at its toes in guarding the rights of individuals i will like to refer a particular case the background in which it was placed before me the one since it is mentioned there khatoon bibi case sitting in multan bench a petition habeas corpus petition was placed before me and it was agitated therein that three persons they are being detained by the police without showing their formal arrest in accordance with section 1 section 61 and in violation of article 10 of the constitution and also contrary to the article 10 of united nation convention against torture i appointed a bailiff he visited the police station recovered those persons from the precincts of the same police station and they were brought before me judge is to decide the cases on the basis of the law but out of human frailty on occasions we are driven by sentiments and emotions but even in such like situations we guard the rights of individuals in accordance with the law of the land in accordance with and the orders are to be passed in consonance with the express provisions of law 
So this is what I did. The three persons, from their very appearance, they were hailing to be from, unfortunately, the lower strata of our society. They were having no clue about their right, the right which is guaranteed to them under Article 10 of the Constitution, the right which is given to them by the United Nations Convention Against Torture, and the Criminal Procedure Code, the procedural law which which deals with the cases of criminal nature. Now, I would like to refer a para from the judgment on in that which was in, in accordance with Article 14 of the, of the Constitution, dignity of an individual. Quote, dignity of an individual by text of Article 14 of the Constitution is secured and as, an, and as a necessary consequence, every organ of the state is obliged to respect it. The Constitution is the most sacred legal document of a country, and rights guaranteed to its subjects cannot be permitted to be encroached by the public functionaries, executives, slash executives. Dogmatic approach of paying no respect to the rights of marginalized statum is paving way to retribution and resentment oftenly forcing even a noble soul to opt for a criminal life. It goes without saying that dignity of a man is mutilated when he is publicly or privately humiliated, degraded, ridiculed, more importantly due to his poverty and helplessness. Similarly, the dignity of an individual is traumatized when he is deprived of his liberty in violation of express provision of law by a police officer. The protection of fundamental rights is not only the responsibility of the judiciary, but also obligation of public functionaries and executives as can be extracted from Article 5, sub-Article 2 of the Constitution. According to Michael J. Fox, once dignity may be assaulted, vandalized and cruelly mocked, but it can never be taken away unless it is surrendered. Borrowing wisdom from the referred court, this is the obligatory upon the courts to let not even the poorest man of the country to surrender his dignity on account of personal disability to protect it." Unquote. Now, Bell converse with Article 10, 10A, 14, United Nations Convention Against Torture, and International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which was adopted by the General Assembly in 1966. I set those persons at liberty. I believe, and at that time I was having firm faith, that if these police officials will be permitted to go scot-free, that will, that will absolutely be an exercise in futility, the exercise of issuing the process, appointment of bailiff, recovery of those three persons. Then I proceeded in terms of United Nations Convention Against Torture. At the end of the judgment, beside imposing penalty and fine upon the delinquent police officials, I passed an order that for the next two years, they must not be posted at a place where they are, they are likely to interact with the general public. Number two, I imposed fine. Number three, complainant was given an option to approach the concerned DPO through an application for the registration of FIR. And above all, in order to contribute in the jurisprudence and in order to contribute in the system, I issued certain directions, and those directions include one, perhaps you people will not be interested, that was pertaining to the maintenance of the, of the case diaries, because that was the issue in that I will discuss that as aspect in the later part. But in accordance with Article 10 of the Constitution, first of all I directed that grounds of arrest in accordance with Article 10 of the Constitution and in consonance with the United Nations Convention Against Torture, 
each person the moment he is have handcuffed he must be provided with the grounds of his detention number 2 appropriate steps be taken for educating the police personnel in the province in accordance with article 10 and 11 of united nation convention against torture regarding torture during custody interrogation arrest detention or imprisonment subsequently in another case which came up before me and was also pertaining to police access whereby the liberty of innocent individual that was usurped without having due course to law. I requisitioned a report and it was informed that this judgment was circulated in all the divisions of the province of Punjab and steps were taken to educate the police officials and police personnel about uh, the torture, importance of United Nations Convention against torture and the impact torture leaves on the physical and mental uh, or and, and, and the, the physical and mental trauma it inflicts to an individual. This is one example. Now I will come to a proposed bill to counter the torture. But before that I would like to share with my audience that in Pakistan there are different provisions in various statutes which safeguards the possibility of uh, inflicting torture and save the innocent persons. I have already referred section 61 and 167. Then there is another provision, 344 CRPC, when the trial, 160, sorry, 61 and 167 that pertains, these two provisions pertain to investigation stage. But when trial commences, report 173 is submitted in the court, then comes in operation the provision of section 344 CRPC, whereby it is made mandatory, mandatory that every person must be pro produced before the court after 15 days. In exceptional circumstances, that time period can be extended. Now, there is another case wherein another police official, since the torture, which is defined in Article 1 of United Nations Convention Against Torture, that also includes the mental suffering of a person outcome of excess committed by a public functionary. There was another case. In that case, vehicle of a person was detained by the police and despite court orders, that was not being released. I'm, I would like to share with ladies and gentlemen sitting here, I spent approximately 20 years in the bar and for the last six years I am working as a judge. But I noticed one thing common. Unfortunately, this police excess or the excess committed by the public functionaries in the shape of torture that paves way to retribution. That generates a sense of vengeance amongst the victims. And often, they resort to resilience against the law. They indulge in crime. So, realizing the importance again, in another case, Irtaza Mahmood case, I will again refer a quote from uh, a portion from the same from this judgment. But in that judgment, I resorted to similar approach, pragmatic approach, which I believe, which is the requirement of the time. And I will refer a para from it. I am tempted to express here that police officers are custodian of law 
thus should have utmost respect towards the fundamental rights and dignity of an individual. If a public functionary is found to have encroached upon the rights of a subject or is guilty of flouting the orders of the court, and that too with a sinister intent of providing undue benefit to an adversary, the court's mode must come forward with a pragmatic approach of curbing such tendencies. Survival of a society vests in the fair administration of justice, and such objectives can only be achieved if the rights of individuals are jealously guarded by the courts. Police officials have to understand that their appointment as such are made not solely to provide them a livelihood but for contributing towards social justice and rule of law. Similarly, the purpose of establishing a judicial system is mainly to administer justice and for achieving this end, police officials are legally and constitutionally obliged to work at, as tools. If it is felt that any police official has gone blunt as a tool, the court must chisel him through an appropriate judicial order so as to create deterrence for the others. Now, besides these two judgments, I can refer many others. Like the judgments which are issued in reference to the judicial confessions which are recorded during investigation and so as to be used subsequently basis for awarding conviction. The law on this subject even, that is with the grace of Almighty Allah very clear and I feel proud in saying that judicial confession even if made before magistrate, if proved not to have been, not to have been recorded voluntarily or is an outcome of some durious pressure, compulsion, that is discarded. 164 CRPC that makes it mandatory read with section 364 CRPC that the courts must ensure through different modes that the confession being made by the accused is, voluntar is, is voluntarily made. The guidelines provided for recording such statements so as to oust any element of torture are given in High Court Rules in Order, Lahore High Court Rules in Order, Volume 3, Chapter 11b. Certain questions are to be asked. An accused person is to be provided time to think about the proposed confession which is about to be made. The magistrate is required to ask him or even to physically inspect him so as to ensure that he is not subjected to torture. Now coming to the point. A bill which is proposed to be placed in the National Assembly and I suppose, if I am not wrong, it has yet not been placed before the National Assembly. Based on my experience, first of all I will request the law ministry to open this bill for debate. Invite suggestions of all concerns like the police officials, the public functionaries, and uh, I am focusing on the police officials, but it also includes our agencies which are dealing with the with, dealing to stop the drugs trafficking, custom authorities, police, FIA, and others. Law ministry must call for the suggestions because any legislation made in the haste ultimately it will have its repercussions. Like way back in 1997, Anti-Terrorism Act was promulgated. That was not opened for debate. That was not placed before the, before the bar associations, bar councils, police officials, and the legal practitioners. Now what happened? Anti-Terrorism Act 1997 was enacted to decide expeditiously and speedily the cases pertaining to terrorism. Lack of consultation led to the inclusion of many offenses in the schedule of Anti-Terrorism Act 1997. And the courts which were established to decide the fate of terrorism cases within seven days, they were overburdened. Mur double murder cases, offenses, any attempt or abetment to commit those crimes. So 
attempted murder those were also included in the in the schedule of anti terrorism act to get because there was a double murder requirement and if two persons were if attempt was made on the lives of two persons that was also included abduction cases there are various kinds of abductions 364 364 a 65 65 a abduction for ransom abduction for wrongfully and secretly to confine a person abduction to cause grievous hurt abduction of um, a child all these offenses ultimately were placed before the anti terrorism court in addition cases of decoity robbery since 392 396 were included these cases were also placed before the anti terrorism court and then it took 4 years to get rid of this legislative defect the honorable supreme court of pakistan in maramali case came to the rescue anti terrorism act was referred for redrafting then offenses were excluded and then our courts started deciding the cases of terrorism purely now i believe since i am here to give my humble submissions my humble to contribute my humble bit on the subject i have gone through the bill of uh, torture and custodial death prevention and punishment act 2022 this is the proposed name now by virtue of uh, its uh, section 5 exclusive jurisdiction to probe the cases of torture that is given to federal investigation agency the first question what if the word is used exclusive jurisdiction and uh, the jurisdiction exclusive jurisdiction the idea again that is followed by extended limited and coordinated jurisdiction but without dilating upon this debate my question is what if a personnel of federal investigation agency is accused of having tortured an individual then again the same agency will be probing this matter and i don't think that will meet the ends of justice i believe that at a district level magisterial courts or magistrate be empowered special courts be con- constituted at district level headed by a magistrate and he be empowered to deal with the cases arising out of uh, this proposed law torture and custodial death prevention and punishment act 2022 you must be having this question why i will share with you one particular example and before um, doing so i will also like to invite your attention towards section 5 subsection 2 according to section 5 subsection 2 if at any time including during the grant of physical remand under the code the magistrate has reasonable grounds to believe that the offense under this act is committed or complaint of torture is lodged by the person in custody he shall order a medical examination and if the results of such examination reveal infliction of torture he shall notify the agency to investigate such offense i will quote you one instance and then i will dilate upon section 5 sub section 2 in lahore sitting at the principal seat again a habeas corpus petition was placed before me the man was recovered from the police station and he was in a bad shape he was in the police custody for the last about 9 years he complained about the torture and i immediately referred him to the nearest government hospital at around uh, 3 pm that medical report was placed on my table and the doctor reported that the man is having no symptoms of torture no bruise no abrasion nothing absolutely 
Then I confronted that detinue with this report. And believe me, he removed his clothes in the open court to show me his back. Don't you think that Article 14 of the Constitution, which speaks about the dignity of man, that was brought to nullity? However, I again passed an order to get him examined from another doctor and issued direction that he will appear in person on the following morning. He was kept in a local police station in Lahore because he was recovered from Shekhupura, a, a, a city situated approximately at a distance of about 100 kilometers from Lahore. The next day that medical rep report was placed before me and it was endorsed that he was badly beaten by the police. Now, do you think that this section 5, subsection 2 can deal with such a situation? There is no inbuilt mechanism provided in this bill whereby the dishonest opinion of a doctor that can be challenged. Number one. Number two, to take or to deal with the doctor and to bring him to the box. Unfortunately, unfortunately not. Though there is a mechanism of, of medical re-examination, but that is a time-taking process. I believe, coming, to, coming back to my suggestions, Magistrate at district level, they be empowered to deal with such like cases and this must be his choice to immediately get the victim medically examined from the doctor and consequences must be provided in this bill. That if a dishonest opinion is given by the medical practitioner, there must be some consequences for him which are not given in, herein. Then I believe police order must be given effect. Previously, the law which was dealing with the working, police working, that was Police Act 1935. And then, need was felt to cover up certain deficiencies. The law was revamped. Police order that came into field. And according to Police Order 2002, Criminal Justice Coordination Committees are constituted. National Provincial Safety Commissions are established. And this is one of the job assigned to them that this aspect, aspect of torture, police access, that must be taken care of. Then, according to Article 156, if a police officer vexatiously and unnecessarily detains, search or arrest any person or inflicts torture or violence to any person in custody, this misdeed is made punishable with imprisonment of five years. Likewise, according to Article 157 of the police order, if there is any delay in producing the arrested person before the magistrate in violation of Article 10 and, and uh, perhaps I think United Nations Convention Against Torture, uh, it's Article 10. This is also made punishable with one year. I will sum up. We system, you people must have seen musical instruments. That creates, the, the musical instruments or a group creates an atmosphere when all of them play their respective instruments in a rhythm. If not, that gives a very odd vice. So if we have to pull on and if we have to address this problem, our system and all the organs of our public functionaries must function in accordance with the
with their obligations. The establishment of the court, district level, awareness to the public functionaries in accordance with the mandate of UNCAT, providing of education to general public and more importantly in our educational institutions. That will apprise the individuals about their rights. There are many subjects, but if a subject is included at least to apprise the individuals about their, about their right in detention matters when they are approached by the police and if arrested, their right to have access to counsel of their own choice in accordance with Article 10 and the Miranda Rule, a judge, which is emanating from a judgment of the United States of America passed in 1966, I think we can make a difference. So, with these opening remarks, I leave the rostrum to my host.